My name is Verena Müsenbichler Bryan, and this semester I'm the director of the Duke New Music Ensemble. I had three goals in mind for us. One, to connect with students on campus to perform virtually and in person. Two, to facilitate faculty and composition students' collaborations. And three, to connect with you, our audience, and our community in a Chompy and John Brown play along of the low arc of the sun. Tonight, you'll hear the final product of this semester's work. We hope you enjoy this versatile performance. Hey everyone, my name is David Johnston and you're about to hear my piece Prelude, Intermission and Rondo for solo alto saxophone performed by Caleb Wu. Uh, I'm very excited for you all to hear this piece. I came into writing it really with the only two goals being to write something that I felt like was idiomatic that fit well on the alto saxophone and to write something that I felt like the performer of the piece um, would have fun preparing and performing. and. By all means, I think I have accomplished that. I'm very happy about it. Um, if you can tell by the title of the piece, it is in a three movement structure. Uh, the piece begins with the first movement, the prelude, which is dramatic, um, maybe even on the edge of being a little theatrical, um, and then moves into the slower, um, bit more contemplative second intermission movement. And then it finishes with the third movement which is the rondo, which is very uh, rhythmically intense and energetic. Um, I'm very excited for you all to hear it, and I hope you all enjoy. Thank you all so much.
On April 24, 1916, a small group of labor leaders and political revolutionaries staged an armed insurrection against British rule in the hopes of establishing an independent Irish Republic. When I decided to set Yeats's reflection on these events in the fall of 2020, I was fixated on the political turmoil surrounding the presidential election. I watched with horror as the Republican Party completed its transformation into a cult of personality surrounding Donald Trump. In Yeats's poem and the events of April 1916, I saw the present reflected and distorted in the past. And I asked myself, what would I do if an uprising was required to uphold democracy and fight back the forces of a pseudo-fascist government that does not believe I deserve equal rights. I could not have imagined that just a few months later, we would experience an insurrection in our own country, driven by delusions and right-wing propaganda with the goal of overthrowing democracy. There have been countless revolutions and insurrections throughout our history, some of noble intent, some that are dark and terrible. I do not presume to know what the anti-democratic insurrection of January 6th, 2021 means for our future. But one path into the future has been closed and each and every one of us has been changed because of it. As we step forward into that future, we cannot allow racists and bigots to change the narrative. To be silent is to be complicit. White nationalists are just white supremacists. Neo-Nazis are just Nazis. Black Lives Matter and trans rights are human rights.
Hi, I'm Courtney Dantzler and I wrote Woodland Mischief for Alex Sop. She's this really lovely flutist and vocalist and it was really wonderful to work with her. Um, each of the three movements of the piece, which are Behind the Bushes, Humming an Ancient Tune, and Lurks a Little Gnome, they were all inspired by the sounds of the forest and uh, my lifelong fascination with fairy tales. So I hope you enjoy.
Hello, my name is Brooks Fredrickson. I'm the composer of the next piece, and I'm going to tell you about my piece while skateboarding. Hope you can see that. Okay, here we go. So, the piece is called Carson Yoga, and it's called Carson Yoga because I asked my friend Carson to develop a six minute yoga sequence that my friend Julie then shot. She also did all the video editing. So, Carson developed the sequence, and then he narrated it. And I re-recorded his narration, and every time I said a body part, I had some software spit out a musical gesture, which I then turned into parts for Yeva and Jennifer, and then I added some other parts and turned it into a video that you're gonna see. So here it is, here's Carson Yoga. Thanks for watching. Take your big toe mounds together. Spread your knees as wide as your mat, walking your handprints out one at a time. Lead with your heart. Your heart is the heaviest thing in your body. Your heart is anchoring you down towards the mat. Take your forehead down to the mat. Forehead to the mat, hips to heels. Your fingers are actively reaching. Your arms are actively reaching. Inhale, exhale, walk your hands back towards your body, one handprint at a time. Roll up your spine, stacking one vertebrae at a time. Stack your head on top of your shoulders, find a neutral spine. Take your hands behind your body, press down into your shins and knees, Lifting your hips, finding a back bend, and an opening of your chest in the front of your shoulders. Exhale, take your hips back towards your heels, leading with your heart, your heart sinking down to the mat, your arms reaching long, your forehead down, inhale, exhale. Lift your gaze, look between your hands, your heart goes forward between your hands, 
legs and toes go long behind you, opening your chest and your chin to the front of the room. Inhale. Exhale. Tuck your toes under. Take your hips to your heels, stretching the bottoms of your feet. Inhale. Exhale. As you inhale, find one long line from your heels all the way to the crown of your head. Your belly is engaged. There's a broadness in your chest and a broadness in your back body. Inhale. Press your hips up and back, finding length in your spine, flexibility in your shoulders. Inhale. Exhale, let it out. As you inhale, lift your right leg from your inner thigh, find length. Step your right foot next to your right pinky. Inhale. Anchor down in your left hand. Your right hand goes up towards the sky, opening up your chest. Exhale. Untwist. Take your right hand back down to the mat. Take your hips up and back as you extend your right leg. Find a flat back. Exhale. Draping your head over, keeping your right leg engaged with your kneecap lifted. Exhale. Bend your front leg again. Take your right leg back and up. Exhale. Open your hips to the side. Let your heel fall over to your left hand side with a little twist. Your right heel will take you all the way down to the ground. Lifting your hips up towards the sky, reaching your right hand back. Exhale, moving from your core, anchoring down in your left hand and left foot, taking your right foot back and up. Take your heel down to the mat. Twist from your navel, anchoring down your right hand, taking your left arm up towards the sky and opening up your chest. Take your left hand back down to the mat. Press down into your left big toe mound. Find a flat back. Extend your left leg. Drape down towards the ground, letting your head hang heavy. Bend your left knee again. Inhale. Your left leg comes up and back. Exhale. Opening up your hips to the side. Letting your left heel fall over to the right side with a twist. Your left heel takes you all the way down to the mat. Press your hips up towards the sky, finding a back bend. Reaching your left hand the front of the room. Exhale. Anchoring down on your right hand and foot, moving from your core, your left foot goes up and back. Place your left foot down. Taking the knees wide on the mat, big toe mounds come together, pressing your hips back towards your heels. Letting your heart and forehead sink down to the mat and we'll breathe here.
Hi, my name is Brittany Green and I am a second year composer in the music department. For this performance, I collaborated with trombone professor Michael Chris to create a short work for trombone and electronics. My piece, entitled Embers, places short sporadic gestures in the trombone in conversation with one another through the use of granular synthesis and delayed effects, building to a cacophony of sounds. The piece draws its name from these gestures, invoking images of specks of fire arising out of a smoldering flame.
Hello, my name is Dayton Kinney, and I'm the composer of the song cycle, Falling Between the Worlds, based on Anne Witherspoon's poems of the same name. Witherspoon wrote these poems based on her experiences as a woman living in a senior community during the COVID-19 pandemic. Tonight's live stream is the premiere of two movements, Alone and Confinement, with Sandra Coton and David Hyde performing. Thank you, and please enjoy. Just when, when, just when, when, just when, 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 just when, when, I ask you when, did, just when, did the world start to beat? It seems so roomy before, so roomy before, before, but I'm not sure. Start to 
These fragments are inspired by Rodin's sculptures. The electronics in the first movement, named for the cathedral seen here, emerge like the sculpted hands, reaching from nothing and intertwining with the flute. The second movement combines quotations from Verdi in the electronics and Debussy in the live flute. This borrows from Rodin's idea of combining body parts from two different people, as seen here in his assemblage, Mask of Camille Claudel and Left Hand of Pierre de Wisson. All of the electronics originate from a recording session with Alex Sop in fall 2019. This finished piece, Fragments Cast in Bronze, is indebted to Alex's generous collaborative spirit.
Hi, uh, greeting from Osaka, Japan. This is Mina Sakamoto, the composer of Partita Americana. My program note is very short. Welcome back to America. I characterize the time we are experiencing now with the keyword distances. This mountain movement composition features temporal and geographical distances to the two entities that have influenced me. Enjoy, laugh, and cry with a fabulous performance by Xiaomei Ku. Thank you.
Hello everyone, my name is Hui Jun Lin. I am a third year PhD student at Duke University. 
Um, the piece you're about to hear is called Two Elastically Centered Cannons. Um, it's pretty straightforward as the title suggests, uh, it's two cannons. So in the first movement, um, it's a cannon in unison. Then the second movement, it starts from a cannon in perfect force, then to uh, in major second, to minor third, and then back to unison as a little recap. Um, the piece is written for Dr. Copeland Burns and Dr. Fancher. I know uh, they play together a lot, so in this piece, I, what I wanted to explore is um, the close relationship between the two instruments and to, by constantly putting them in conversation with each other. Um, I hope you like the piece. Thank you.
Good evening and welcome. I'm Maximilian Amici. I would like to briefly introduce the composition that I wrote for this occasion. There are at least as many ways of composing as there are people in the world, and probably much more. One of those consists in sitting at the piano, alone, hence the title solo, and just start dreaming, exploring endless combinations of sounds, letting the mind go, then fixing on paper the best results of those sessions. With this piece, I try to catch the magic of some of those moments, and at the same time to recount something about the creative process itself in a self-reflective way. In fact, the actual creative unfoldings often are not as linear as those that you will hear. The film director Alfred Hitchcock once said that drama is life with the dull bits cut out. This very well applies to this piece too, for I did not insert in this composition the countless interruption and dead ends that often happen. Nonetheless, as you will hear, I did transcribe some failed attempts, and the piece does mock the creative process in some ways. It is with great pleasure that I now leave the stage to the wonderful pianist Daniel Seyfried. Before doing so, I would like to sincerely thank all of you for watching this performance. I hope you will enjoy listening to this music as much as I did while composing it. While writing this piece, I was trying to create something unique and poetic. Thank you all so very much. Thank you. 